This is Algebra 1, Term 2, Lesson 7. And this assignment, we're going to look at some linear functions in a context. The first, though, will be a piecewise function. So they're going to be basically going back over some of the same concepts they used in the last assignment. And then finally, we're going to finish it up with sequences. Not exactly analysis, but we still need to do it, and it's still a linear function, so uh, it was a good place to put it. So let's take a look at the first part of this assignment. This will be in your slides. So here they have a distance time graph. We're still talking about the CBR, which is the same walk the line activity that was at the end of the last assignment. And these several questions, I've, I've got several slides with the same graph, and they're just analyzing different things. Domain, range, over one interval of x. You could talk about that's the domain for that piece if they don't remember that. Um, that's something to, you could mention there. Uh, then the y-intercept, where is this graph decreasing and what does that reveal about the person in this context, the CBR, the movement. And then finally, what is the constant or is it constant? What is the, the distance not changing? And then, is this a continuous or discrete graph? Well, obviously the graph is continuous, but the question you're asking here is, is it, should it be continuous? And if it is continuous, why? So explain the choice in this context. Um, my suggestion on all of these is I would let the kids work alone or with their teams through all of the slides uh, related to this graph without saying too much and then maybe towards the end when most of the kids have filled out most of their slides come back and have a bigger class discussion about that alternatively you could make this a building thinking classroom task and you could actually put all of these questions on a piece of paper and just pass it out and say let's go to the boards I want y'all to work this out and then we'll talk about it as a whole class once everybody's done the way I would handle that is I would give the kids you know a task like this one if I sent them to the boards and they worked, I would have them all sit down and then I would basically go group to group and query groups as I was going around the room so the other kids could hear the conversations. The kids would be seated in their desks hearing what I'm saying, looking at the work of the other teams and listening to the answers from the students in those teams. Uh, and then at the end, I said, if y'all want to go back, I'm going to give y'all about five, ten minutes. Feel free to go back to your work update anything you really think could be improved or add anything you think you need to add and then what I would do is go around and snap a picture of each team's task and that would be their assignment for the day so I may I may grade it I may not grade it it just depends but usually I would grade just give one whole grade to the class I mean to the each team and it would be pretty much the same grade for the team I was very generous with the grading because uh, my goal is just to get them to work in teams to analyze and to learn from each other and not just from their own team but from the other teams. Uh, so as you can see uh, this is the last this is the last slide on this particular task with this same graph and I'm giving them a link out to GitHub. I kind of wish I'd given you this in the last assignment so I have included a, this link in uh, your teacher notes for the last assignment, but feel free to use this even on the last assignment if you don't want your kids to have to write out their equations on a whiteboard. So when you go to GitHub, it's going to look like this. Now it starts out with two pieces, but they can change that to three pieces, and then they can type their equation here. Now they won't put the f of x equals, they'll just put the expression and then they can put their domains here now if you'll notice how these domains are written um, you probably want to include that first endpoint so see they can change this to look like that and it'll change that to a less than or equal and that to a less than or maybe you want them both less than or equal so they have these choices they can even change the color so if they don't want it to be black and they want to make these pieces different colors they can I, the only thing I don't like about this is the fact they don't label the x and y axis it, it's they have absolutely everything but that so that's the only fault here but this is a valuable tool 
and they can build this function and if you go down here the x min x max they can adjust these so that they can see into the first quadrant a little further to the right a little further up um, this is a fantastic tool i'm glad i found it um, keep this link handy you might need it if you need if your kids need to create an equation what's really nice is it makes this right here look perfect so they can just take a picture of it and put that on their slide which is how I've created some of your equations in your assignments so just wanted to show you that neat feature now once they finish the slides they're going to move over to the oil in the tank problem now I have given the oil in the tank problem in my store this will have the full rubric if you want the rubric but if you don't need the rubric I will give you in your guide uh, this link right here to this task so it won't have the key but it has the questions pretty self-explanatory you may not even need the key for this one but it's just a simple oil in a tank problem a linear function and it's saying the valve was opened in the tank and then what's going to happen and so they're finding key characteristics of the graph x-intercept y-intercept slope what do those mean in this context what's happening they're finding a specific value v of 5 what does that mean in this context show me that in the table I think I took that out of the I might have taken that out I'm not sure if I took that out of the one that's on in my store but yeah this is an older version I'll, I'll try to update it but uh, this is something you'll want to basically have your kids do in teams the way I did this problem um, is I would have poster paper I bought that's something I bought every year was this giant grid paper and I would have kids uh, put problems like this on that paper so they'd have a giant graph labeled they would plot the points on there they put the key points on there and highlight them or label them so it was just a uh, pencil paper kind of thing but on a giant poster and then I would post those in the hallway or in the classroom depending on what year it was <laughs> towards the end I put all the math work out in the hallway and then I didn't put it in the classroom because of state testing it was kind of a pain to have to cover all that stuff up or take it down so I kept most of this stuff in the hall but uh, yeah that's how I handled the oil in the tank problem it's just it's a good way to review a lot of concepts so it reviews function notation here so you've got that in there you're actually doing solving an equation here you've got the equation is equal to 18 what value of X would give you that and what does it mean you could add to this you could increase the number of questions and talk about is this continuous or discrete which makes sense in this context is um, the domain gonna have real numbers or do we need to do counting numbers here um, and so forth and you know are your labels do you have your units and your labels on your graph you know you can just it's a time to kind of focus in real close uh, that is sort of what analysis is all about we're looking at deeply at these functions and what represents what and what is this 1.2 minus 1.2 in this equation what does this represent what does it mean in the graph where do I see that now of course we're not doing the analysis that we do in graduate level mathematics but we're starting the process the process of really looking at rates and lengths and how these things help us make sense of a function's behavior so the last task in this assignment sort of unrelated actually quite unrelated is revisiting arithmetic sequences or arithmetic sequences and so students are just going to basically start at the beginning uh, this one they're going to create a sequence using these points fortunately they can't move these left or right they can only move them up and down so they'll do that the first row should have 10 seats the second should have 14 and the third should have 18 and then here they're going to type in an equation I believe these are self checking some of them will be so it'll probably let them know if they got it right I'm also giving them the form so if it tells them a certain form for the self checking thing to work they'll need that form if it's not self checking then either form is fine any equivalent expression will work let's write it in this form so this time we're going into the same the same exact scenario same numbers but this time let's use 
slope intercept. So this might be a good time to bring up the distributive property. You know, the distributive property allows us to take that first equation and distribute that slope and then we can figure out what's happening. You may mention that this y-intercept really doesn't fit this context because you don't have a row zero. We start with row one. Uh, but it is a way to think about it. Like if you're doing a sequence, whatever's the first, instead of the first term, what would the zero term be if you could continue backward in that pattern? Uh, and students do use that to tr figure out an expression or equation for a sequence. Here it says uh, create an equation. So you'll notice there is no format given here. They can choose slope intercept form if they want. Uh, they can use the one that's translated right one, which is usually the one we do, but they don't have to. Here's another scenario. I do want to point out the seat numbers have nothing to do with this question. I kind of realized that after I made it, I was like, you know, I bet those seat numbers kind of throw them off, but they're irrelevant. There's just, there's just this number of the seats, the total number of seats in the row that you see here is the, is the expression I used to come up with this equation. So uh, ignore those little numbers printed on those seats. They don't need that. So you might want to tell them. Uh, here they have four choices and of course they can click on all four to find the correct one. Only one of those does work. And this notation is T of N. Again, T of N, find the one that works. So there's a two, I think there's three in a row. And then they have to create one themselves. So they can use the ones they just created to help them. And they can use a different form from any of the forms that were in the previous. As long as it goes through those points, then it is correct. Again, you may want to mention for a sequence, we don't technically connect the dots, but we're doing it here just to come up with an equation. And here's another one, but with a decreasing, with a negative slope. Here's a context. This time I'm telling them use slope intercept form. Change the variable instead of f of x. We're using f of n. And then here they get to pretty much just have fun. They are creating an arithmetic sequence with six terms. There is one limitation though. The last term must be zero. So I'm not going to tell you what that means, but there's something specific they should all have in common because that last term is zero. So they will create their equations here and this one's kind of fun. This is an arithmetic sequence they are building in Polypad. I would have them create a pattern of some sort. And as you do this, like when you click on this, this little copy tool, you can copy this one. They can delete all the ones that they don't want. So they'll click on the little trash can to get rid of it. Uh, so maybe they're going to use these triangles and they're just going to delete everything else. And then they could do that. But tell them to use what they want, delete the rest and create some sort of arithmetic sequence with this, with these pattern blocks. Then write an equation to represent their sequence. And then finally, when they click submit, it's gonna have them explain. And this is really the only analysis they're doing in this particular activity is when they explain what that rate of change means in this function, in this pattern, in this equation. What does it mean? This would also make a nice portfolio artifact uh, because this is something they've created for themselves that's unique to them. So this should be fun. That concludes analysis of functions. Next up will be systems of linear equations. Y'all have a great day.